Hello everybody, it is me Lady Hell and today I'm going to be doing the project number two from Texas Teachers and I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you a guided practice on how to go through that so you can know how to set it up, make it original and everything. I'm going to also show you how to use Google Scholar to help you support uh, what you're saying with actual factual academic research okay i used to use google scholar a lot in my master's program for those of you who don't know i did go to the uh, full sale university i have a i have a bachelor's degree in digital cinematography and i also have a master's degree in um and uh, marketing digital marketing as well but anyway but i teach special education good times right anyway so let's go, uh, let's go to the screen and I'm gonna show you how to set up your project. So when you first set up your project, you wanna put like your title page. Altogether, I use a total of 15 slides. And you know, I know some of you are like, well, the instruction says 12. Trust me, you're gonna be fine. I turned this in, pass it on the first time, okay? Um, so when you first do it, what you're gonna do is you're gonna, of course, put your name, the name of the project, and the thing. Right here, you have the second slide is gonna be your objectives. You might be like, Lady Hell, where do I find my objectives and stuff? They're in the instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and log into Canvas real quick, and I'll show you where those are. All right, so I'm going to log in. And uh, train required courses. Okay, as you see, I just turned in project five and six. So once these, once they're they didn't came down to the bottom I'll show you how to do five and six hopefully I did them correctly okay but as you see I'm already done uh, project five oh six no I'm on seven well five one part of five done oh no that's an assessment I was like what <laughs> okay um as you see I, I've done one two three and four and so i'm waiting for five and six to be um, uh, graded or whatever but i'm gonna log into canvas i'm gonna go to the courses this let me goes back back to all the other courses and so we're gonna go to project number two okay all right and this is called the learner okay that's where i got the title of the project from once you start your project and you go into where it says materials needed blah 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 here goes the knowledge of student um thing so this right here you can download this because this is what you use it tells you uh, the knowledge of student and student needs effective teaching begins with understanding your students how they are their backgrounds their issue remember uh the statement we mass love before we bloom right if our needs are met we're able to we're, we're able to learn effectively okay so here go five um they have a total of like four different kids from us for us all right and where i got my objectives was right here where it says identify each student and the issue they're facing identify the development the developmental Im impact of each issue um research that provide resources and that are aligned you know all that stuff right you pick you choose make your objectives whatever you're making right so from there um you have the introduction of the student we have nelly who stand with her grandparents and you know she ain't seen her her mama her mama in jail y'all she can't she always hear gunfire they shooting boom 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 bang 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 nelly living in a guy okay. you, then you got brandon all right brandon was nine years old his mama done died his his daddy couldn't take care of him and now he in foster he in foster care and he's always bullied and beaten by you know two other boys in the home right oh baby then you have ellie ellie is a really sweet girl but she's very anxious um her parents divorced because of her because her mama was a drunk see her mom but they said it nicely they didn't say her mama was a drunk they said her mother's alcoholism okay so it says her father is a long-haul trucker so this man is a hard worker he uh you know um, oftentimes Ellie has to shop, cook, clean. So her daddy is giving her money and saying, Hey baby, go get you some world. Go this way you wanna do that, cook. All right, baby, you're gonna have to clean up around the house or whatever. Now her mama her daddy, look here, her daddy send her money regularly, 
right? But she worries about paying bills and she cries often. She don't she doesn't have the space to be a kid because while her daddy is out there working and he's sending the daughter the money home, he's like, Okay, baby, you gotta pay this bill, you gotta pay that bill. And so she's forced to be an adult before she's um you know, she she's even a, in an adult, all right? And she and she has not technically been diagnosed from anxiety, but obviously she's exhibiting anxiety uh, symptoms. Okay. Um, and then finally we got Ian. Ian Mama just gone. He gone. And it said uh, Ian Mama left when when he was five, and he lives with his dad. He does not know where his mother is. Again, here we go. We got this hardworking father who's working these long hours, you know. And I'm saying it like this to kind of get you in the mindset of, oh, not for you to say, oh, poor, poor Tink. Oh, I can't believe Tinky they did them Tink like that. It's not for you to be in a mindset of like that, but it's in the mindset for you to really see what's going on with the children and, um, you know, whatever their issue is, etc. Because it says if Ian, he's an avid gamer, he, but he mad all the time. He just mad. He be mad for no reason. Like, when I look at that, that's what I, what I think of. And that's because I've been in the classroom and I've seen students like this, right? They're upset. And basically, they want the they want the same type of love and everything as their as their peers, but they don't they don't get that when they go home, right? And sometimes the only love that children get are at school. Okay, so now we have we understand the needs of each year and all this. So here we go. This is how I set it up, right? So I get the objectives, which I got from over here on an um over here right here all right here. I got the objectives. And now what I'm going to do is that um, you might be asking me where you get this picture from, Lady Hell. Well, there's a site called Pexels, okay, P-E-X-E-L-S, right? And, um, it's you know, you got videos, all this stuff you can use royalty-free. Um, of course, somewhere you're supposed to give uh, credit to the author or something like that but you can you can use it they're, they're free to use um, copyright free so they're okay to even use in your projects you can just pick a picture that goes with your um, with your slide okay so the objective this is the student identify your student and I, and I just found the picture and I put a little shadow on the bottom or whatever but I just found a little a picture of a teacher and that's how that's how I got that there and put it together, you know, and put it together. Okay, so remember, if you're going to be using this as a guide, change the color, make it your own. Okay, make it your own. Don't make it crystal because that's that's plagiarism. All right, so here we go, and I do the same. I'm gonna break this slide down to you, but I do the same thing for all three students. Okay, all all four of the students. So here is Nelly, right? And so Nelly is just a random girl that I picked off Pexels. I put her situation, all right, you copy and paste her situation. And I put her grandparents right there. And then I found the picture of a ghetto or a hood, you know, to really, so when the reader is reading this, they can really get in their mind the Nelly situation, right? And Nelly could be black, white, purple, pink, it don't matter, okay? I, um, I just randomly pick Nelly and I randomly pick some grandparents, well people who look like grandparents, and randomly pick some type of food I see, right so, I got Nelly is ec economically disadvantaged, she's at risk, she did not pass a standardized state test, uh, she lives with her grandparents since her mother is in jail, unfortunately the apartment complex where she's lived is riddled with drugs and crime it is common to hear gunfire and police sirens at night, it, I mean basically I copied and, copied and paste her situation Okay, we could do that. On the next slide, this is where I kind of, I do my diagnoses of Nellie, right? And so compared to Nellie's pill, she's economically um, disadvantaged. Um, I get to talking about um, how, her, how, this, how this also can affect her temperament, her abdiability, her accesses to resources outside of school and health, and being without a mother to guide her, Nellie would be subjected to various mood swings, right? And so I gave my diagnoses here. In the next part, I put the research. So research from the American Psychological Association show show a study how the long how long term effects this have on children below. Okay, and then I I I I, I pulled from the research that I did, and of course I I uh, I cited it here. 
Okay. What do you find is? Okay. So I'm saying, you know, this is going to mess with this child's temperament, um, her basic, you know, she's going to have anxiety and stress and all that good stuff like that, right? So I took whatever I was talking about, and I go to this site here. This is a jewel, okay? I'm telling you, I, I, I would not have gotten through my master's program without Google Scholar. Google Scholar is amazing. So you have articles, and then if it's something dealing with law, you also have case law. And then you can actually select the courts and all that stuff like that if it's even cases that you want to use. This is also good for those of you who are commentators as well. So if you do common commentation like on YouTube or whatever, you will be able to go and select and find cases and all types of things like that. I just love Google Scholar. It's just an app for the for those who are researchers like myself. And and it's like look, look here not ready for that but and if it's just articles these articles are from reputable scholarly stuff okay it's not just some random stuff on the internet and then also show you that there's been new scholar met scholar metrics that has been released as well this also use EBSCO host um, all of you know all of those beautiful wonderful libraries that many of you at your universities even after you have uh, graduated you still have access to so before you buy these papers and whatnot, always check with your university because more than likely you still have access um, to those scholarly libraries. And it's just here for free for you on Google. So I'm looking up, you know, I might have put childhood um, anxiety. Uh, or separation. So uh, childhood anxiety disorders, childhood, uh, childhood anxiety and depression. You can, you know, however. So you can start with a sentence, sentence childhood anxieties, childhood stress, ch um, you know, childhood parental separation, you know, parental P E R E N T A L separation. Okay, we need to spell parental right. All right, and separation, all right? Okay, experiences, okay, whatever, right? So here we go, childhood parental separation experience and depressive symptomology in, a, in acute major depression. You know, parental loss, is, it's effect in adult life. Adverse childhood experiences and frequent headaches in adults. The relation of childhood separation anxiety to adult depressive and anxiety states. You know, it has all of these different ones. And maybe you you might want to, uh, um, you know, put something else. It has different suggestions. So we're going to say the impact of, ooh, look at here. Don't we love this? The impact of demograph uh, demographic fat factors, early family relationship, and depressive symptom symptomology, and teenage pregnancy, and all that. I mean, we can click this. And it's going to take us to the Australian and New Zealand Journal of Psychiatrics, right? So we're going to uh, we're gonna accept all there. So it's going to give us the abstract. It's going to get us the method, the results, the conclusion, all that good wholesome stuff. Now, again, you can order it online or you can access these journals, etc., through your institution. And many have, um, you know, institutions or whatever, you can get the whole thing. But even from the abstract, you can take the information there that matches whatever that you're saying in your diagnoses, copy, paste it, quote it. Um, I mean, cite it. Right, so let's say if I took this, I copied, I put it in the research part, and then the only thing I'm going to do now is that I need to cite it. So, right here below on Google Scholar has the ability to cite it and it has the format. So, if it's APA, you know, whatever format, most some people use MLA and some people use APA. Um, I know I like to use APA, it didn't tell us, it didn't tell you which one you, you had to do. So you know, choose your poison and copy, bloop, paste it and go on about your business, right? So now you have your diagnostics, your research, and you have your cited, your cited information that's backed up with what you said, okay? Oh, but that's so easy. So the next thing you're going to do there, and you're going to put resources and support. So obviously we're talking about food, health, um, after school programs, etc. So I'm going to look for, you know, stuff for tutoring, right? And so Texas has the ACE program, 
All right. This is a program that's federally funded, which her grandparents, they wouldn't even have to take any money for. It's got sign her up. Right. Um, you know, I put what the teacher can do. I can also um, I talk about the SNAP benefits, stuff like that. So those are the resources and, and supports. And then we go on to Brandon. The same thing apply. I copy and paste his situation. I put, you know, he's at risk for behavior and shelter. I put whatever whatever my diagnosis is. I put my research and I cite. Okay. Then I put the resources, support, and help. Help. Okay. Same thing with, with old Ellie. Oh, cute little old Ellie, right? Okay. I put her name, put that, put her situation. After I put her situation, of course, I say my little my little piece, the research piece. And what what supports the research piece that that deal um, and also the teachers resources for Ellie's anxiety okay then and that's my game but oh that's my game so you know he on the computer he playing Roblox stuff like the app boys so I kind of know kinda how this situation would look and again I put in I put a picture of him I grab the pictures or whatever um, I put a situation once we've put his situation, we go over here and then we put, you know, in got some anger management issues and all that stuff like that. And so I put, you know, my diagnoses and all that. I put the research as well. Um, and then I also put the thing to back up what I said, you know, back up what I'm saying that's supporting. So your research should be backed up in academic stuff. Okay. And then from there you know i put his management resources is that in the third um and i talk about you know the teacher can put together a bit plan you know um, a bit plan which is a behavioral intervention plan and a behavioral intervention plan is is the ability to be able to calm the student when they're when they're triggered when you know they're triggered by whatever they're you know they're triggered by and i put you know some things that they can do for that uh with a behavior plan and at the end, um, I did my conclusion, um, and I just put, you know, my conclusion on the whole thing. And, and of course, one of my favorite things is that I actually learned this in the classroom was that we have to. Um, I put though all the students, though all the solutions, it's not going to eliminate the fact having a safe place and safe environment allow the children to Maslow address the need before they bloom, and that's actually the education. All right. Um, in every situ, you know, no matter how much interventions and things that you put in place, w realistically, that's not changing. That it doesn't change their situation. It only it helps. It helps, right? It helps. And sometimes just having help goes a long way than trying to like just completely change people because you can't completely change people. And that's a fact. Um, and everything and I know and I know some of you who are new might be new teachers and be like yes you can I'm like, all right. I'm like, all right. I, 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 uh -uh. I'm like keep teaching you'll see you'll see like for real for real right so that is how we do project number two and as promised, I told you guys I will load this up this weekend. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, again, there's some other amazing, amazing, um, really breakdown of this and everything. But I hope I broke this down in a concise manner that will help you understand. Again, I'll leave the link to the project in the description there. Um, if you want to, you can always go to file. You go make a copy. You can do select the slides or the entire presentation. Even if you do the entire presentation again, don't copy me word for word. That's going to be your dumb self if you do that. And they be like, uh-uh, uh-uh, plagiarism, okay? So be sure if you do copy my entire presentation, use it as a guide because that's what it's meant to be. Honestly, it's meant to be a guide because my your my opinion may not be your opinion, right? But you can definitely, um, you know, use it to help, all right? But don't be dumb, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you like dumb ain't a nice word it ain't but some people are grown folk grown educated college folk <laughs> don't even like I just try to get rid of the class <laughs> but anyway um, alright have a good one and I hope that helps you guys and until next time I'll see you on project number 3 God bless <laughs>